Hello. So we have derived uh, the expression for the gain and input and output resistance for a common emitter amplifier, uh, but we have done so um, by using a little bit of an intuitive feeling for how the circuit works. We haven't really done a formal derivation for uh, those parameters. And so in this video, we're going to do a formal derivation for um, gain, input, and output resistance of a common emitter amplifier. In order to do that, uh, we will use the small signal model, the hybrid pi model, uh, since we're looking at the uh, AC small signal gain, input and output resistances. Um, and I'm going to start with a basic common emitter amplifier for simplicity, just so that we get used to doing this type of analysis. And then I'll do the common emitter amplifier with an emitter resistor. So I've uh, drawn the basic common emitter amplifier. Everything looks the same as the one we just uh, analyze except uh, there's no emitter resistor. Uh, and the first step is going to be redrawing the AC equivalent circuit using the hybrid pi model. So let's go ahead and do that. The capacitors will be shorts for the AC equivalent circuit. And so it will look something like this. We will have V in going through a short. Um, and then we will have R1 and R2 both going to uh, R1 to a, um, an AC ground and R2 to ground. So I'm going to combine them already into the equivalent parallel resistance. So this will be R1 in parallel with R2. This is going to make our circuit look simpler. Um, and then this goes into the base of the transistor. And we're going to model our transistor using the hybrid pi model. So this will be R pi, the voltage V pi across it, and then the uh, from collector to emitter, we're going to model it as a current source, GMV pi, which we can also um, write down as beta times small signal IB, IB being the current into the base, uh, it's a B. And uh, in this case, we are going to model also the output resistance arrow for the transistor. And, uh, and then this goes, this is the transistor collector terminal, and it gets connected to from RC, which then goes to uh, VCC, which is an AC ground. So this will be ground. This is the output terminal. Again, CC2 will be a short. Um, and this is pretty much it. Our transistor we have replaced with uh, its small signal model. So this is the transistor right here. This is the base, terminal, collector, and emitter. Um, and initially, oh, and let me write down also the um, the input resistance will be the resistance looking into the input of the circuit, so that's R in, and the output resistance will be the resistance looking from the output, so from here, R out. All right, so let's start with the gain, and uh, the small signal gain is going to be the ratio of the output voltage to the input voltage. So uh, the output voltage will be the voltage at the, the collector terminal. We can write that as V out being equal to, and notice that uh, we have this current source, GMV pi, and uh, that current is flowing out of this terminal. I'm going to write it uh, using blue. So there is this current that's coming out of this terminal, right? And that's going to be the sum of the currents going through R out and RC, or the parallel combination of uh, little r o and r c. Um, and so that current, uh, beta times i v or g m times v pi, uh, is going to cause a voltage drop through the parallel combination of r out times r c uh, defined by Ohm's law. It's going to be uh, a voltage drop of the current, g m times v pi, times the resistance, which is the parallel combination r out times r c. And it's going to cause a voltage drop from ground to V out. Um, and so V out will be sitting at the voltage of negative GM V pi times RC in parallel with little r o. So this is going to be, again, this is the voltage drop 
across the parallel combination of resistors and then since the current is flowing from ground towards the V-out terminal, that's why we get the negative voltage. Now there's a voltage drop from ground to the V-out terminal. So the terminal um, at the V-out V uh, is going to be sitting at lower than ground by an amount of GMV pi times that resistance. Uh, the input voltage V in, uh, similarly, is the voltage across resistor R pi. Um, Right, is the voltage at this terminal right here. This is still sitting at V in. And so it's going to be equal to uh, V pi as labeled in the circuit. So I can write V in as being equal to V pi. Now my small signal voltage gain is going to be the ratio of those two quantities, V out over V in, uh, which is going to be <coughs> negative GM V pi RC in parallel with little ro divided by V pi. Since V pi appears both in the numerator and the denominator, I can eliminate it from both. And this just becomes negative GM RC in parallel with RO. And I've used uh, this terminology um, on purpose as opposed to using beta IV so that we can see uh, very clearly the fact that a transistor, a BJT transistor, uh, can be understood as a transconductance device. In fact, the voltage gain is defined as GM, the small signal transconductance, times the output resistance, which in this case is RC in parallel with RO. And so you can see that this is a transconductance amplifier. And it's good to think of a transistor as a transconductance amplifier because that is a model that's going to extend also to MOSFETs. So it gives us a, a generic framework to understand all transistors. Um, but you may say, well, that's not really the expression that we came up with when we were doing the more intuitive derivation of what was going on, the more qualitative derivation of what was going on in the circuit. Um, and if you do a little bit of mathematical manipulation, you'll see that it actually is. Uh, we can rewrite GM. If you remember, there are um, two quantities that we want to remember here, or two relationships. One was that R pi is equal to beta times little r e, and another one is that GM, the small signal transconductance, is equal to the inverse of little r e. And so we can rewrite that expression now as AV being equal to minus RC in parallel with little r o times GM, which is 1 over little r e. And this is approximately equal to negative RC divided by little re. Again, that is assuming that uh, little ro is much larger than RC. So the parallel combination is approximately equal to RC. Um, and so that's it. This is uh, the expression that we had come up with for voltage gain uh, for the common emitter amplifier. It's minus, since it's an inverting amplifier, the overall resistance connected to the collector divided by the overall resistance connected to the emitter, which in this case is just little re. Let's take a look at the input and output uh, resistances as well. We can see R in uh, is equal to, and uh, if we look at what I've labeled as the R in uh, terminal, you can see the first thing that we see is a parallel combination of R1 and R2. And that's in parallel with R pi. Or we can rewrite R pi as beta times R e, little r e, which is the expression that we had come up with as well. And finally, uh, R out is going to be the resistance um, seen looking from the V out terminal, as I've labeled in the circuit. So R out. Um, and it's going to be RC in parallel with R out, and then we're assuming that the current source GM times V pi is a, an ideal current source with an output resistance of infinity. So it behaves as an op or it looks like an open circuit for uh, purposes of calculating the equivalent resistance. And so it's just going to be RC in parallel with R out, which is approximately equal to RC. Again, assuming R out is much larger than RC, which will be the case normally.
And so that's it. We've um, come up with the same expressions or equivalent expressions using the small signal uh, circuit. Uh, you may wonder, you know, is this important to know how to use this small signal model and, and uh, to be able to do this type of analysis? And the answer is, it is. Uh, now, you typically won't be doing this type of analysis for the common circuits that we're going to study, the circuits that will most commonly appear. You will just, you know, either know the result or be able to easily locate it in a reference and just use it. Uh, but it is important to do this type of analysis when... Uh, faced with a new circuit, especially if it's a complex circuit. Um, it's it's useful to be able to do it just once. Then once you know the result of gain com input resistance, output resistance for that circuit, you can just go ahead and use the results. But um, the first time when faced with a new circuit, it's um, perhaps the easiest way of getting an, an answer, especially if it's not a circuit that's easy to see intuitively. Thank you.